Hey everyone, welcome to another Sunday where we get to have tons of fun while learning about Jesus. Now, today we are doing something very different but very exciting. We are having a live scavenger hunt. All right, you know what that is? Okay, let me explain. I'm gonna give you in a few moments, a few things you need to look out for during the service. Okay, so before I explain any further, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to run as fast as you can to grab a pen and a piece of paper. Are you ready? Steady? Go, you have 10 seconds. I'm gonna wait here for you. Run as fast as you can, something to write with. Pen and paper, it's gonna be crazy. Go fast, 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 fast. Got it, you back, you back, everyone back, sitting down, you ready? Let's go. Okay, so quick just recap. So I'm gonna give you a list of six things that you need to look out for during the service, okay? When you see this object or can answer this question, write it down on your piece of paper. And what you need to do is as soon as the service ends, you need to WhatsApp in your answers to the number on the screen, the same number that we use for everything, okay? Are you ready to write down what you need to look for? Your pen's ready, paper's ready. The first thing you need to look out for is, what is the color of Keith's shirt that he is wearing today? The color of Keith's shirt. Got that? Okay. Your next thing is, what is the animal that features in our story for today. Got that? The animal in our story for today. The next thing, gotta be wide awake for this one. How many dancers are dancing in our memory verse video? Okay, so how many people are in that video doing the memory verse dance? Okay, got that? Then this week, there is a really cool object lesson. So I need you to tell me the three things that you need to be able to do that object lesson, okay? And then your next one, which is a bit more intense, is what did that object lesson that we did today teach us? Got it? What did the object lesson today teach us? And finally, what is the color of the background of the at home discussion slide. Okay, so quick, quick recap. Number one, what color shirt is Keith wearing today? Number two, what animal features in our story for today? Number three, how many people are dancing in the memory verse dance? Number four, what three objects did we use in our object lesson? Number five, what did the object lesson teach us and last but not least, number six, what is the color of the at-home discussion slide background? You got it all written down? Good, so pay attention and we can't wait to see who gets us their answers first. In fact, the first person to send us in all the correct answers will be featured as our scavenger hunt champion on next week's video. Yes, sounds awesome, I'm so keen. For now though, let's all stand to our feet. We're gonna go into time of praise and worship and just give all the glory to our King. So let's go wild.
Hey, what's up everyone? It's so good to be back with you guys. We are continuing our series that is going through the fruits of the Spirit and we have almost gone through all of them. So while you guys are still warm, I'm gonna ask everyone to stand up and we are gonna go through the memory verse song and see how many you guys can remember. We've got to live it out, live it out. Yeah, we've got to live it out, live it out. We've got to live it out, live it out. The fruits of the Spirit. Spirit, 
Well, now that we've had a refresher, let's get straight into the fruits of the Spirit that we're going to be learning about today. And that fruit is gentleness. Now, me being a boy, when I hear the word gentleness, I think that this is not for me. Maybe it's a sign of weakness or it's a girly thing. Because I'm a boy after all, so I need to be rough and tough. And while I'm playing sports or having fun, I'm probably going to get hurt. So gentleness is just not for me. But then I think about it and understand that my definition of what gentleness is versus God's definition and the Bible's definition of what gentleness is. And then I realize that my definition is probably actually wrong. Because when you look at what the Bible says about gentleness, we see that there's actually a great strength that is attached to being gentle. And as Christians, God has given us his spirit of gentleness because that is what we should be known for. We see that gentleness actually allows us to reach those around us in a way that makes them feel loved and safe. So being gentle is actually a good thing. We see that the Bible also talks about Jesus himself being gentle and Paul even writes about gentleness in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 7. He says this, that he treated people the same way that a mom would care for her little children, which is actually really gentle. So if we look at the Bible's definition of what gentleness is, we see that there's actually a great strength in being gentle, and that is what we as Christians need to be. So take a look at this video to see what gentleness in action actually looks like. Hey everyone, today we're going to introduce to you someone who's really cool who's going to show us a picture of what gentleness looks like. Let's go meet them. So this is Jo, and this is Enid. Now Jo is blind, so she can't see. And Enid is her bad dog, so she acts like her eyes and leaves her out. That's so cool. Could you show us what this is, an illustration of what this looks like? Enid? <laughs> I've had Enid for two years now. Wow, so how old is she now? She's four years old. Wow! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us a story from when you first got her? Um, I had to apply to Guidance to get my dog, and then I had to wait two years for my application to go oh. through, so it was a wait. And I was having a problem walking into trees and to poles, and I was falling off the pavements. And it was scary on my own trying to cope. And I realized I needed help, so I applied for the guide dog. And I flew to Joburg and they fetched me from the, air, from the airport and took me to their center. And you stay at the center. And you again wait about two or three days before they introduce you to your dog because they have a, a number of dogs that they want to suit your dog to you in particular. They don't I mean, you have an interview, but they want to see how fast you walk your confidence, how tall you are, and the dog's character has to match with you perfectly. Really cool. So she's a chunky girl, like me, but a chunky girl. <laughs> has Enid ever been rough with you through any of those types of situations? No, she's, she's the most gentle, placid dog ever. She's loving, she's the most incredible, kind and patient. If you go shopping and you tell her to sit and wait, she will wait. And you talk to her friend, she will wait. They're the most incredibly kind and patient and loving animal I've ever known. Well, so why do you trust her to be you? I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I need her. 
I need her because I can't cope on my own anymore and I need her to need me. I can't cope. Um, otherwise, you know, I was forever walking into doors and trees and hurting myself, spraying my wrist really badly. And since I've got in it, nothing like that has happened. That was amazing. I didn't know you could learn so much about gentleness with animals. I know. Here's the thing about guide dogs. They are literally the eyes for the person that they're guiding. Yeah. They are incredibly loyal, loving and gentle. But at the same time, they won't hesitate to let their owner know that there's danger or an obstacle they need to watch out for. They also know how fast their owner can walk and move around. So they're incredibly considerate about their owner's abilities and limitations. Exactly. And Guide dogs are strong and gentle at the same time and they're by no means weak. They give a sense of confidence to the owner and they just do the things that they thought they couldn't even do. That's kind of like how we're supposed to be. Yeah. Our responsibility as children of God is to give the people around us a sense of confidence to do things. We need to encourage them in a way that makes them feel like they can do it, not in a way that makes them feel stupid. Mm, exactly. I mean, a guide dog wouldn't yank its owner when it's going through rough times, but it would be gentle. The same thing that we should be like with our brothers, sisters and our friends. We shouldn't be harsh with them when they're going down the wrong path. We should just be gentle with them and just love them. Alright, so I'm going to show you a really cool demonstration object lesson on how effective gentleness really is. So, all you're going to need is a balloon some Vaseline and a skewer stick. The ones used for roasting marshmallows, those ones, yep, go to. These three objects, balloon, Vaseline, skewer stick. Now, what we're gonna do is if I had to just try and push this skewer stick through the balloon, it's more than likely gonna just, well, pop instantly. But if I take some care with this balloon, I'm gonna use my Vaseline for that, okay? I'm gonna add some to both ends where I plan to stick uh, my skewer stick through so I'm going to put some at the top and the bottom so we can get all the way through like that I'm going to just put them on the floor okay and now if I try to put my, my skewer stick through we're going to see a very different result to if I had just gone right in there so what we're going to do is you start by pushing your stick through the one end of your balloon nice and slowly see it's gone in okay and I'm going to get this to come out right at the other end where I put the rest of my Vaseline just like this. This is the scary part. You ready? And there we have my stick has gone all the way through the balloon. Now if I had just pushed the stick through without thinking it definitely would have popped but by adding the Vaseline we see how much easier it went in. By being gentle I had a much more successful result. So I want you to imagine this balloon is like the people around us. Okay the screw stick well that's like us. And the Vaseline is like the gentleness that we approach people with. So as we can agree from this is that gentleness gives us much better results. And we've been called by God to treat people with gentleness and with great true care. Because when we do that, you see people feel loved and accepted. The words that we say to people should be words that encourage people and build them up, not tear them down or leave them feeling hurt in any way. You see, gentleness true gentleness is truly caring about the feelings of others and treating others how we want to be treated in return. So every time you see this, remind yourselves that being gentle is the way that God has called us to treat other people. So you can try this at home. It's very simple and it works every single time because gentleness always, always achieves much better results. After today's service, maybe you found that you could be gentler in your approach towards other people. Or maybe you found that you could be more mindful towards others' feelings, whether you're talking about them or talking to them. If this is you, I'm going to pray that God helps us to be more mindful and caring to the people around us. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you so much for the opportunity to have our family and friends around us, Lord. I thank you so much that we have people in our lives that really love us. Lord, I pray that you help us in every circumstance to really think about what they have to say and to care for them and to be more gentle when we approach them, Lord. Amen. Let us all stand to our feet and turn our hearts and our minds towards Jesus.
Before we wrap up today, I want to pray for a second group of people. If you guys have never asked the Lord to come and be Lord and Savior of your life, and you want to become a child of God, I'm going to pray a simple prayer, and it would be amazing if you could repeat it after me. Dear Lord Father, I thank you so much for everything that you have done for me. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that without you in my life, my life means nothing. I pray that you would come and live within me, and make me a brand new person. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. I pray this all in your precious name. Amen. Well guys, we have come to the end of another awesome, awesome Sunday. Thank you for being here with us. We love spending our mornings with you. I couldn't think of anywhere else I'd rather be. So I wanna remind you of two things for today. Number one, that scavenger hunt. As soon as the service ends, you can send your answers in to the number on the screen. So I hope you're watching really closely today and I hope you have all those answers written down because next week we will feature our winner, the ultimate scavenger hunt champion. Second thing, our memory verse. I'm sure by now you guys should know it really, really well. And so we want to see you in action. So if you think that you have nailed it and you can do it, dances, words, lyrics, everything. We want to see videos of you guys doing the memory verse. And if we get some really good ones in, we'll feature them on the service next week. So get those in. Scavenger hunt answers, memory verse dance. We can't wait to see you guys. That is all from us. We have got our at home discussion slide coming up in a few moments. So stick around for that. Otherwise, that's all from us for this week. We will see you soon. <laughs>